This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen and this is your weekly dose of Technolos. Shannon is on her honeymoon, so she will be joining us next week. Until then, we are going to answer some more epic Hack 5 viewer feedback. I'm going to take a little tour of the studio, talk about network connectivity and other projects in the works. I am very excited. Also, welcome to the set in progress. Paul, we're looking a little like, a little light back here. I think maybe we could, well, what do you guys think? Feedback at hack5.org. That's what this episode is about. This thing will evolve. This is, in fact, your warehouse in a way, and we would like to invite you here as we are going to be doing some amazing projects, kind of akin to the hack house. So we've got IRC projection screens set up. We've got network cameras that just went in. I am stoked. But let's start off with this tidbit from Jorgen. Jorgen? I can't pronounce this. Anyway, he says, hey guys, congratulations with the new location. It looks great. I'm a regular viewer from Norway and love the show. I was hoping that at some point you'd like to share some of your specs of your studio and you could tell us, you know, which cameras you're running and, uh, you know, what your pr uh, production resolution is. Uh, he says that he's into live video events and hoping to share some information with us later. So that sounds really cool. Um, Paul, I believe we are using GF2s? GF3s, so they're Panasonic cameras, they're micro four thirds, which means they're basically DSLRs, except tiny. GH. GH, GF, GH. anyway, they are GH3s. And um, these upgraded some of the Panasonic AG line cameras. They look really great, I love these. So yeah, it's just like a, a DSLR guy. You know, you get a little, nice little flip out LCD. I think there's even a new version out now, but um, What's nice about these is you can actually, you know, swap out the lens like you would on a DSLR, the difference is, does it have a mechanical shutter, mm -hmm. Paul? It does, okay. Um, but otherwise, we like these because we can put on a nice lens that has a, a, you know, low aperture, which means that we can get a nice little depth of field. Of course, I am very close to the wall here, and it's just a white wall, so I don't expect anything fantastic quite yet, but we're going to be working on the set a bunch, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so yeah, these record great in AVC HD, but most of all, it's because we can get a live video out of the HDMI port. It's a standard size HDMI. No, it's a mini size HDMI. Um, Paul is really the one that knows everything about the cameras here. But um, yeah, that goes straight into our mixing setup, and we're using a Blackmagic ATEM mixer that takes in all of those uh, HD video feeds, and then that all gets recorded on a Kai Pro. Is that correct, Paul? Kai yeah. Pro. So that records in 1080i60. No. No. <laughs> Paul knows all I of it. I wish it was. <laughs> what does it record? 1080i30? Uh, 1030p. What is 1030p? Uh, 1080p, 30 fps. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I'm really disappointed. Oh, man, 1080p, progressive 30. Anyway, we're, we're doing the best we can with that. But uh, maybe that can swap out. Um, so yeah, we'll get some B-roll of that. It looks really great, and Paul's office is now part of the studio, which is kind of exciting, um, which will lead more into when we can do live things in here. Uh, so that brings us to Don, who sent a lengthy email about audio and green screen sets. Now, audio-wise, we understand last week's episode was pretty terrible as far as Echo is concerned. I'm very excited about some of the cool stuff that has been happening right up your alley. And I think Cause would be proud of this, because who ah, would have yes, ever envisioned? So. We're working on it. Right now, we are using these uh, kind of eco foam panels that go up on the wall. It's pretty cool because they don't have any fiberglass in them or anything. Um, they look kind of industrial. That's all, you know, post-consumer trash and stuff. But uh, those are up on the wall, and they are doing a pretty good job, I would say, uh, at reducing the echo. And they're really made for uh, audio like um, just acoustic management, not like sound isolation. And so far so good, we have a lot more to put in. We got a huge shipment. We had this giant crate of these baffles that are going in. So they're, uh, they're these foam panels that are gonna hang from the ceiling and hopefully we'll have enough to put all over the warehouse and be able to shoot anywhere and make it sound great. As far as green screens, uh, we have only typically used green screens where appropriate. Like Paul and I are kind of anti-green screen in the same way that we're anti-jump cut. Uh, but we'll do one here for you just because we love you. Wasn't that fantastic? We're on YouTube. Uh, green screens we use on Hacktip and Metasploit Minute because we like, those are very 
oriented on computer screens and what's going on on the computer screen. So we like to kind of project them behind us. Uh, a lot of, I'm so surprised how much feedback that we've gotten about using green screen sets, which sure, I mean, we could do those. Um, so yeah, that might be something that we play around with. I always like doing something, you know, tangible. Uh, I'm excited that we have windows again that we can do set dressing and bring back the, uh, the Toronto cityscape uh, from hearkening back to season six and all of those. Um, and otherwise, yeah, looking forward to feedback on that, but thanks, Don. Um, now, Unkush says, love your show, and I don't know if you've already done this on the show, but it would be really cool uh, to show these batch scripts that steal Wi-Fi passwords and save them to a hidden directory. He's also made another one that saves them uh, and sends them over you know, Wi-Fi, saves your stored Wi-Fi passwords and sends them over FTP, which is kind of cool. Um, this is actually stuff that you can do on the USB rubber ducky, we've done in the past, and I thought that I would just share that with you as a cool piece of feedback, and we will link to those batch files in the show notes. Ready for another jump cut, Paul? It's magic! <laughs> I know, I'm like running both sides of the show now. Shannon, come back! Uh, John says that he loves the show and he's been watching since season one. Uh, says, keep up the great work and wanted to share a project he's been working on. It's a mobile robotics research platform and um, he built to learn more about robotics, which is really the best way to learn. Uh, and it's all about autonomy and self-driving and there's a bunch of awesome information and pictures on his site that we will link in the show notes. This is just a cool piece of feedback that I was like getting my techno lust on. So thanks for sending that by. As well as Nando, who says, I'm a fan of the Tri-Valley, uh, or uh, he's a fan from the Tri-Valley in California, and he's been watching us since we moved into the old firehouse. And he's a huge fan, and he was wondering if he could volunteer and help set up the hack warehouse or anything else for that matter. And I guess we should probably put it that we're going to do some things with a hybrid of the uh, Bay Area hacker brunches that we've been doing, as well as maybe some warehouse hackery, I don't know, maybe some projects and builds and other stuff that we can do uh, like that. Um, you know, the address is somewhat pertinent to operational security, otherwise there's a massive security system in here. But otherwise, we don't really advertise, but we will have people join us at the uh, warehouse if you're part of those Bay Area hacker brunches, which is pretty cool, because then we can vet you and make sure you're not an axe murderer. Uh, Jason writes in and says, dude, paint a green screen on the wall. Actually, I didn't say dude, I added the dude. He says, bring back ThreatWire, that's how he found us, and actually, that's a fantastic idea. As soon as the dust settles, I think we might be able to do that show more justice with a completely new format, uh, which I think maybe the green screen would be appropriate for. Uh, he says, get some graffiti on the warehouse walls and you know, make a big and hacker themed. I love that idea. Uh, maybe we can get some art going on in here. And he says that I like uh, when you show the computer feed monitor as opposed to filming them over a shoulder. Um, however, you'd like to see the same kind of thing with Android. The trick with Android is getting the screen from Android you can do over ADB. Um, but it's not like you can get a nice little HDMI feed out of there. You can, on most Android devices, use uh, MHL to get a video feed out of HDMI off that micro USB port. The problem then is, say for instance, last week when we were showing that RF Analyzer app, uh, that would tie up the USB port and then we wouldn't also be able to plug in the Hack RF and get that live video feed out. If you look at most uh, shows that cover this stuff, they either do the ADB type screen capping or they just shoot the computer screen, or tablet screen, phone screen. What is a computer anymore? Also, he wants to see more Hack 5 van action um, and some car hacks, so that sounds pretty cool. We can definitely get into that. I'm bummed that we can't get the van in the warehouse because of the whole loading dock situation. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for the feedback, and we will, in fact, uh, he asks about uh, streaming cameras. We have put up a security system. It should be very fun to um, kind of share that with you when we have events and stuff. And uh, Komai also writes in about the whole rebuttal to the nothing to hide argument. I'm going to put the full text in the show notes because it's really great and it links to an awesome talk everybody should listen to. It's Glenn, uh, Glenn Greenwald at TED Talks and it's amazing. Uh, so I encourage everybody to check that out. So that's it for right now. When we get right back, we get into the fire round of viewer questions. But until then, taking a quick break. Imagine you're a hacker, a hacker with an idea. It's a fantastic idea you want to share it with the world and you know what you're going to need. You're going to need a domain and the folks that can get you that 
or domain.com. They are like a massive warehouse with like all the domains and you can go there and sort through all the shelves. And to make it super simple, they've got a domain discovery system that'll take you right to the ones that are perfect for your idea. So I encourage you all to check out domain.com, mostly because they're affordable, reliable, easy to use, but also because they're really fun on social media and they've been supporting Hack5 for years. So you should go and tweet them at domain.com and say, hey, thanks guys for supporting Hack5. And also, thanks for the awesome domains. And get this, they want to make it even better with a discount code. You can get 15% off domains over at domain.com when you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. That spells Hack5. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Glitch writes and says, when are you guys getting 3D printers? Well, I'm looking at the Robo R1, but I'm not really sure. What do you guys think? Gachacho says, is that a big Chinese laser cutter? Yes, it is an MT3050D by Morn, and it has a 22 by 14 bed and a 40 watt tube. Adler Web writes, will it blend? I hope not. Chunky Chess One says, take a deep breath of that. Fiberglass, pink. Yeah, okay, so actually, InGuard, that's the stuff I put in the van, it's polyester, it's got no fiberglass, it's no formaldehyde, no VOCs, no other harmful additives, and it's made by 50% post-consumer recycled stuff. Sadly, it's discontinued, because they're a small manufacturer out of the UK, it was really expensive and difficult to get into the States, and now basically everybody's going with this Dow Safe Touch stuff. So, yay, Dow Chemical, it's not 50% recycled content, but that's good stuff. <laughs> To Wicked says, does the warehouse have a large red button that shall not be pushed lightly? Not yet, but hopefully when we have a robot, you too can push the red button. Archiver says, what's the first thing you wanna make with your CNC machines, laser cutters, or whatever? I can't wait to make drone frames. And I think we might need a CNC machine for that because I wanna cut G10. Rich says, when are you putting in the water slide? Never. <laughs> and finally, Mr. Smith says, what are you doing about connectivity? It's a broadband cluster here. The best we could do was ADSL2 Plus by Sonic.net, who has been actually really cool, so props to you guys. We're still waiting on a Comcast line because they're the only one in the area that can actually service anything affordably that's anywhere around 100 megabits. Right now, we've got two up to 40 megabit bonded uh, ADSL2 Plus modems that are essentially giving us about seven megabits each and then we're bonding both of those. Actually, we're not even bonding, we're aggregating those. Doing a little bit of load balancing right now with a multi-WAN PEP link. Uh, we are also playing with some multi-WAN in OpenWRT, which actually looks pretty promising. And then we can add on LTE on top of that. The only problem with that is T-Mobile has a five gig cap for sharing your phone's LTE, whereas you could buy only up to like 11 gigs for their data plans in the US and yada yada. Essentially what we need to do is just root a phone, plug it into there, and then wait for T-Mobile to call us and say, you did 150 gigs in four days on your phone? And we'll be like, yeah, we're playing Angry Birds a lot. I don't know how that works. Also, massage chair. Oh. Oh, there we go. Much better. I should probably also say that we've looked at a lot of the wireless ISPs in the area, of which it's ridiculously expensive for some kind of mathematical craziness of you can't use too much bandwidth or we'll cut you off. So, really our best bet actually might be to hook up with archive.org who in Richmond, just like two miles away, has a center with a 30 foot mast offering something like 80 megabits on an awesome roof to roof network. So we need to reach out to them because we have a roof and we like networks. Well, that's just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. Thank you again for all of your feedback. Feedback at hack5.org if you have questions or, of course, suggestions for the set or projects you'd like to see us do on the show. Thanks for sticking with us as this is a crazy transition period for us. Can't begin to tell you how stressed out I am doing a bunch of stuff that isn't hacking is more about logistics and that's not fun. So anyway, without further ado, uh, by, uh, for Shannon and myself, we encourage you to uh, find us at hack5.org slash follow and uh, to support us directly at hkshop.com. And until next week, we're reminding you to trust your technolust. <laughs>